a couple of videos ago, we saw that in just classic C3 photosynthesis, and once again, it's called C3 because the first time that carbon is fixed, it's fixed into a three, or the first time carbon dioxide is fixed, it's fixed into a three carbon molecule. But we saw the problem with C3 photosynthesis is that the enzyme that does the carbon fixation, it can also react with oxygen. And when oxygen uh, essentially reacts with your ribulose biphosphate instead of your carbon, you get an unproductive reaction. Not only is it unproductive, it'll actually suck up your ATP and your NADPH, and you'll go nowhere. So it, every now and then, when an oxygen bonds here instead of a carbon dioxide, you get you, you get nothing produced. So net net, everything becomes less efficient. And so in in the the very in the I think it was exactly the last video, we saw that some plants have uh, evolu uh, they've evolved a way to get around this. And what they do is they fix their carbon on outsides on cells that are actually exposed to the air. And then once they fix the carbon, and they actually fix it into a four carbon molecule, into oxaloacetate, and then they pump, and that gets turned into malate. Then they pump the malate deeper within the leaf, where you don't, you aren't exposed to oxygen. And then they take the carbon dioxide off the malate, and this is where they actually perform the Calvin cycle. And even though you do have your urobisco still there, your urobisco isn't going to have, uh, the photorespiration is not going to occur, because it only has access to carbon dioxide. It does not have access to this oxygen out here. Now, and that's a very efficient way of producing sugars. And that's why uh, some of the plants that we associate with being very strong sugar, or even you know, ethanol producers, all perform C4 photosynthesis. Uh, corn, sugar, I could write these down. Corn, sugar cane, sugar cane. And and crabgrass. And these are all very, very efficient sugar producers, because they don't have to worry too much about photorespiration. Now, some plants have a slightly different problem. They're not so worried about the efficiency of the process. They're more worried about losing water. And you can imagine what plants these are. These are plants that are in the desert. Because these stomata, these pores that are on the leaves, they let in, they let in air, but they can also let out water. Right? I mean, if I'm in the rainforest, I don't care about that. But if I'm in the middle of the desert, I don't want to let out water vapor through my stomata. So the ideal situation is I would want my stomata closed during the daytime. Right? This is what I want. So I want, if I'm in the desert, let me make this clear. If I'm in the desert, I want stomata closed. I want stomata closed during the day. Right? For obvious reasons. I don't want all my water to vaporize out of these holes in my leaf. But at the same time, but the problem is that photosynthesis can only occur during the daytime. And that includes the dark reactions. Remember, I've said multiple times, the dark reactions are badly named. They're more the light independent reactions. But they both occur simultaneously, the light independent and light dependent, and only during the daytime. So photosynthesis, photosynthesis. Synthesis only at day, and if your stomata are closed, you need—I mean, you know—to perform photosynthesis, especially the Calvin cycle, you need CO2. So how can you get around this? If I want to close my stomata during the day, but I need CO2 during the day, how can I solve this problem? And what what desert plants or many desert plants have evolved to do uh, essentially does photosynthesis, but in, instead of Fixing instead of fixing the carbon in outer cells and then uh, pushing it into inner cells and then performing the Calvin cycle, they do it instead of outer and inner cells. They do it at the nighttime and in the daytime. So in CAM plants, and these are called CAM plants because I could tell you what it stands for. It stands for Crassulacean acid metabolism, and that's because it was first observed in that in that species of plants, the Crassulacean plant. But these are just called, you know, you could call it CAM photosynthesis or CAM plants. They're essentially a subset of C4 plants. But instead of performing C4 photosynthesis, kind of an outside cells and inside cells, they do it at the night time in the day. So they're a subset of C4 plants or C4 photosynthetic plants and what they do is at night let me make, at night they keep their stomata open they keep their stomata open and they perform they keep their stomata open and they're able to fix so and this everything occurs in the mesophyll cells and the cam cells and the cam plants so in the day at the nighttime when they're not afraid of 
losing water. So let's say this is a mesophyll cell right here. My stomata is open. Let's say that this is my stomata right there. And so it lets in carbon dioxide. I'm not worried about losing water vapor. It's nighttime right now. So carbon dioxide comes in here. And then it fixes the carbon dioxide. It fixes it the exact same way that the C4 plants do. So you have your CO2 come in, CO2. You have your PEP. You have your PEP. It's all facilitated by PEP carboxylase. That's the enzyme that can only fix CO2, that can only react with CO2, not with oxygen. And then that is used to produce, and we saw it here in our CAM4, in our CAM4 diagram in the last video, that is used to produce malate, a four carbon, a four carbon molecule. So that is used to produce malate. And then the malate, and then this is what's key, the malate gets stored in other organelles in the cell, in the vacuoles, which are you can kind of view them as large storage containers in the cell. So I, I drew this as the whole cell. I mean, this is actually all occurring uh, you know, in, in, your, in your chloroplast. But you can imagine your cell having a big storage set center where the malate gets stored at night. And you can view malate as almost you know, it's like a carbon dioxide store, because later on, we can access the malate and get the carbon dioxide. And that's exactly what these CAM plants are going to do. So this is nighttime. Then the sun comes up. So now we're in the daytime. This desert plant, well, maybe it's a cactus, it doesn't want to lose its water vapor, so it closes its stomata. So it's, it's the stoma, this particular stoma now, is closed. It's now closed, and you say, oh boy, how's it going to perform photosynthesis? Well, it can perform photosynthesis in that very same cell, in that very same cell, because it stored up all of this malate at night. And so now the malate can be pumped out of the vacuoles into the stroma of our chloroplasts. And then the, the, you can have the pyruvate break off. But the more important thing is you have CO2 break off. So you have a ready supply of CO2. And now we can perform our standard Calvin cycle. In an environment only with CO2, our stomata, our stoma is closed. So we're ready to go. Our CO2 reacts with ribulose biphosphate, in the, in, w catalyzed by Rubisco. It's the whole Calvin cycle, and we produce our sugar. So this is a, this is kind of a neat adaptation. In these high, very efficient sugar-producing plants that aren't that worried about water, they do they perform carbon fixation on the on on things that are exposed to the air, and then they they pump kind of a stored version of the carbon deeper into the leaf to actually perform the Calvin cycle, so that you it's not lossy, so that photorespiration doesn't occur, because down here you have no oxygen. The desert plants. I mean, they benefit from that property as well. But their whole concern is, I don't want to keep my stomata open in the daytime. So what I do is I fix my carbon at night. But I use the exact same prospect, uh, the process. I use PEP carboxylase. And I store it. I store my carbon dioxide at night. And in the daytime, in the daytime, I can actually, when you know my light reactions, my light dependent reactions are occurring, and they're producing my ATP and my NADH, I can also perform my dark reactions in the daytime. As I said, the dark reactions always occur in the daytime, or my light independent reactions, because even though my stomata is closed, I have a store of carbon dioxide in the form of malate.